Testing, 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 testing. St. Paul Baptist Church, where we are convincing the unconvinced to be convinced and make disciples as we connect, lift, and inspire you. Even though summer hasn't officially begun, it's certainly gotten hot out there in a lot of ways. We hope that you are staying safe and well in these times. And for everyone who's connected with us via Facebook, the church website, or YouTube, Join us in the chat boxes so our Digi ministers can engage with you in worship and have prayer with you. Also, please invite others to join you in online worship with us, but try not to create your own watch group. We want to see you all in the vigil. And now let's enter into worship. When the clock hits zero, our worship will begin. And stay tuned after service for our upcoming announcements regarding what's happening with St. Paul. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is graduation Sunday, and what a delight it is for us to be able to come into your homes, come on your uh, phones, come on your pad, come on your uh, computer screen to be able to worship our Lord in spirit and in truth. It is a blessed delight, and we pray that you will stay with us through the entire service. 
because we're going to be honoring our graduates after this morning's worship service, so we want you to stay tuned. I'm going to ask that Minister Jeffrey Stevenson, he's going to come and lead us in our worship experience. Wherever you are right now, if you are following us on our Facebook Live, if you are checking us out as far as our website, or if you're on the phone, please, ma'am, please, sir, call someone, share this with someone. Uh, let somebody know that you are watching St. Paul Live. Amen, amen, amen. So as we prepare to worship our God in spirit and in truth, we're going to ask that if you will give your attention to Minister Stevenson as he comes and lead us in worship. Good morning, good morning, good morning, St. Paul. It is always a blessing to be available, to be used by God. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 103, which reads, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all our iniquities, who heals all of our diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. This morning, as we enter into this worship service, do not forget that we serve a God that no matter what it looks like, no matter the pandemics that we seem to be continuously facing in this country, we serve a God who continuously redeems us over and over and over again. His mercies are new every single morning. Let us continue to worship God this morning. Please join us in our opening hymn, Standing on the Promise. Promises that cannot fail. 
anybody else still standing on the promises of God? I'm looking in the chat streams on our YouTube, Facebook, and church website, and we are just curious. We like to know who rolling with us. So if you would do me a favor, just let us know the city and state that you are watching us from. Just put that right in the chat stream, and we have our social media influencers and our digital ministers that will continue to engage with you. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Ephesians, the second chapter, beginning at verse 1. And you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and where by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God. Somebody in your chat stream right now just type, but God. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Let us go to God in prayer right now this morning. Dear Heavenly Father God, we come before you right now. First of all, God, just to say thank you for being the God of our life. God, we come before you on this Sunday morning knowing that you're already in this sanctuary, knowing that you're already in the houses that are watching us this morning. Because we serve a wireless God, and one that is not attached to a building, one that is not attached to a sanctuary, but rather, God, you're right here with us, no matter where we are. So though the seats may be empty, God, we know that you still fill us up. And we're here with you, God. Fill this place with the train of your glory, God. God, allow your word to go out this morning. Allow it to shake some things up, God. Allow it to motivate. Allow it to move. Allow it to transform this morning. Allow it to deconstruct some things. Allow it to reconstruct some minds this morning, God. For though it seems like we're dealing with more than one pandemic, we still know that you're in control. So God, touch this preacher as he comes this morning and brings us a word that will refresh and rejuvenate us, God. It is in your son's name that we do pray and give all thanks. Amen. Lord, 
we surrender all to you. Have your way, Lord, in this place. Have your way, Lord, in this place. Because you are great and greatly to be praised. Ha, wherever we are, God. In, in our homes, on our jobs, in this place, God, we magnify, magnify you. you. And most of all, we love you, we Lord. Love and you. we surrender, God. We, we submit ourselves all. in this moment, in your presence, God. Have Just have your, your way. We invite you, Lord, into this place. In our homes, in our jobs, so where we are, God, have your have way. Your way. In, in, in this place. Come on, just say that. We give you the glory, Lord. We give you the glory. The
Amen. Thank you all for that. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. Being able to worship this morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. And uh, let me say what's up to our Impact children and youth and to, uh, to everyone, a part of this skeleton crew here. I love you guys. It is good to be back in the Lord's house this week. Uh, I missed you guys last week. I hope you all are doing well and having a good summer vacation. Um, right now, even amongst this uh, coronavirus, I hope you are still enjoying it and your plans hopefully haven't been too wrecked. Um, I was able to go home last weekend and uh, officiate my very first wedding of a good buddy of mine, uh, Ryan and Caroline. And so, yes, yes, praise God for them and being able to celebrate their love and being a part of that moment. Um, it, was, it was wonderful. And then I also got to spend Father's Day with my dad, which was very, very special and just getting to be with my family. Um, definitely do not uh, take that for granted, and I thank God for that time and for Pastor letting me take that as well. And then yesterday, guys, I had some good news too, man, because, man, God is good. Jesus loves me, but, man, I'm engaged too, man. <laughs> Woo. Man, to the, to the love of my life, uh, Taylor, uh, man, I, I love her so much, guys, and, man, I'm, I'm just going to sit up here and I don't want to preach about that today, but, man, I will be excited about it, amen? I will be excited about it. Man, I'm excited to see what God does through our relationship. Um, let's go ahead, guys, this morning, and let's pick back up where we left off on the character of God. And this morning, we will be talking about the forgiving nature of who God is, God's forgiveness. And so the title of this morning's message is Popsicle Stick Forgiveness. Popsicle Stick Forgiveness. And our memory verse today comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Uh, the, I'll be actually reading from the New Living Translation this morning, and it says this, He, being God, God is so rich in kindness and grace that He purchased our freedom with the blood of His Son and forgave our sins. Lastly, our bottom line for today is this, and I just want to shout it, man. God tells me I'm forgiven and free. God tells me I'm forgiven and free. You may be wondering... Uh, you may be wondering right now, a lot of my kids that are watching right now and joining into service, what in the world does a popsicle stick have to do with God's forgiveness? What on earth? What, what are you talking about, Peyton? Well, I do love me a good popsicle. I really do. But I want to tell you guys this story um, uh, from back, in, back when I was in the youth group, um, not too, too long ago. <laughs> Growing up, my family was always pretty involved in church. Um, and uh, I assume you guys can, some, some of you can relate to that your family was involved, that usually meant you were too. And uh, I was very involved in church because uh, my family was as well. And one summer, 
our youth group was planning to take a trip um, to a summer camp out in uh, Tennessee at the University of Carson Newman College, Carson Newman College. And our youth group was made up of middle and high school students. And so I was in sixth grade that year. And so I was just able to go on this big boy camping trip. And back in my youth group at that time, I was called Little Pepe. And I've come a long way since Lil Pepe, but Lil Pepe was able to go on his very first big boy camping trip that summer. And I was excited, y'all. I was excited because if you've ever heard stories or experienced a Christian summer camp, then you know how powerful of an experience that can be. Literally a week long of just being just, just ambushed with Jesus. It's so good. And uh, if uh, you're familiar with church camps, then you know that the very last night of camp might as well be called the Night of Tears because everyone is so, so emotional, because we know that we are going back home the next day. We won't be around this church camp environment much longer, so we're going to take it all in. Emotions are running high. But then also, too, it's a very emotional night, because usually that is the last night that the camp pastor gives his or her invitation, saying, hey, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ tonight, then go ahead and come forward. So, well, I had already, I had already made a decision for Jesus when I was eight years old. But that night, uh, God still taught me something, and I wanted to share that with you all. I, see, now, like I said, I'd already accepted Christ, but, you know, as we walked into that auditorium, Thank you, Jeff. Not today, Satan. All right. Man, so as we were going into the auditorium, thank you, Jeffrey. As we were walking into the auditorium that night, we were given a popsicle stick. Um, Each of us was, all the youth groups were given a popsicle stick as we went in, and we were told that Camp Pastor Ryan was his name, Pastor Ryan. Camp Pastor Ryan was going to be using these popsicle sticks in his message later on, and so we were told to hold on to them. And when we got to the point of the message, which I'm not going to lie, I don't remember much of the message, but I remember this illustration. Pastor Ryan gave us the popsicle stick, and he told us to write down any sin that we have committed or that has us feeling down or sad, one that is keeping us from pursuing God. So I took my popsicle stick, and instead of just writing on one side or, um, you know, of the stick, I wrote on both, guys. I covered up both sides of the stick. And I wrote down, I wrote down these two things, and I wrote them down again today. I wrote down two days of in-school suspension because I was a bad kid in middle school. I got in fights, apparently. That's another story. We'll get to that later. But two days in-school suspension, I wrote on one side, and anxiety and worry, or not trusting in God, I wrote on the other. And so when I wrote these things down, um, man, after, after we did, we went into a time of prayer. And in that moment of prayer, to talk, about, uh, talk to God about my sins, my mistakes, as everyone else was joining in and doing the same, Man, I just started, I started bawling my eyes out. I started crying and I started thinking about not just these two sins that were on both sides of the popsicle stick, but man, I started thinking of anything that I had done to disappoint the loved ones in my life that I've sinned against and the things I've done to displease God. And so, man, I felt sad. I felt unworthy. I felt undeserving, ashamed, guilty, and almost depressed. All in that one moment, you felt the tension of that. And as the tears rolled down my face, I just remember sitting in that auditorium chair with my head between my knees and just sitting there praying, waiting for that prayer time to end. Well, this morning, guys, I'm here to share with you that same message that was shared with me that night when I was feeling that in that moment. The good news I was told that night of camp is our bottom line for today. God tells me I'm forgiven and that I'm free. Our memory verse today tells us how loving excuse me, and forgiving God is. When it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it again says, God is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. The verse starts out by telling us just how kind and how graceful God is. From our previous message, guys, we were reminded of the truth that God's love is never failing. We were reminded that the kindness he shows us through this love is different than any any love that the world has to offer us. Because of his love for us, God offers us this love, this gift of forgiveness and grace that we are not deserving of. He doesn't hate us when we mess up, and I want you guys to know that God does not hate you. He doesn't hate when we mess up. Of course, he doesn't like sin, but his love is so great that he chooses, the Bible says, not to even remember our sins. His love is that great. Isn't that crazy? God doesn't have a a record or a running list of everything that you've ever done and will do. His love keeps no record of wrongs, Scripture says. 
But it doesn't change the fact that we do still mess up. We are imperfect. We do make mistakes. We do sin. Our sins and our imperfections can keep us separated from a God who's holy and just. And that's where Jesus comes in. God is so loving that he knew we would need a perfect sacrifice before the world even began. So God came down through Jesus, his son, to show us the proper way to live, but also to be the perfect, perfect sacrifice for our sins. His blood and his death on the cross is the payment for our sins. So when God had sent Jesus down, guys, it goes to show that his love is strong enough to cover all of our sins, forgiving everything we've ever done and that we will do if we believe that God sent him in his son. It is forgiveness and freedom that we do not deserve, but nonetheless, I stand before you guys today and you here in the church to say, God tells me I'm forgiven and that I'm free. When I think back to that night of camp, as I continue to cry in my auditorium chair, Pastor Ryan brought the prayer to a close, and when he said amen, he told us to take our popsicle stick and take a good long look at it. And I stared it down, and I looked it over both times. And Pastor Ryan told us something like this. He said, I want you to take your popsicle stick full of your sins, mistakes, and the shame that you feel because of them. And he said, I want you to break it. I want you to break it because God has forgiven you through the death of his son. Your sins can't hold you back anymore. And man, that was the message that was preached to me that night at camp, that Jesus' death and sacrifice on the cross means that every time that we look up, we look down, we look around, and we see that cross It is a symbol and a reminder of God's forgiving nature, of how all of our sins, past, present, and future, are forgiven, and they died with Jesus on the cross that day. Man, what amazing love. What amazing forgiveness. Will you join me in prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for your love. Thank you for the forgiveness that you show. God, I pray that any shame, any any type of any type of conviction that is going on though right now, God, in in the kids, Lord, that are watching right now and for all of us here, that you would remind us, God, of your love and your forgiving nature and that you showed us that, man, even when we were not worthy, God, you still came down and you chose us. You chose love. You chose forgiveness. Help us to experience that this morning in a new way. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Let's give God praise for the (laughs) devotional that Peyton has shared. And of course, we want to congratulate him. He is newly engaged. Amen. 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 He was up here sweating. I don't know what that's about. I ain't never seen you sweat that much, man. Well, that's, 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 that's interesting. God bless your whole heart. Amen. <laughs> amen. 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 It's so good to um, be in your presence. And, of course, just want to share a couple of things with you all as we move uh, throughout the rest of this worship experience. We want to thank you all for your generosity and your kindness. We served 142 families this past week. As far as our food pantry is concerned, and thank you to each of you who have given something to help us as far as that effort is concerned. We praise God for you. Um, Also want to thank all of those who joined us on our prayer call this past Wednesday. We were a little late because I was trying to get over from uh, Kaya to share as far as that was concerned, but we thank God for you all. And we send our apologies to those who listen to our phone live streaming number at 845 due to the time run over for the monthly Kaya Charlotte. We were not able to record and replay on that line. And I also want to thank all of those who helped us as far as the June Kaya uh, is concerned, uh, dealing with the uh, topic black ability, white fragility, race issues 2020. Had a great diverse panel of ministers, scholars, theologians, and civic and business leaders across multiple generations. And it was just absolutely amazing. I uh, just want to give a shout out to Reverend Dr. Ben Boswell, Reverend Lori Rival, Rabbi Judith Schindler, First Lady Pierce Scott, Sister Charlita Hatch, Reverend Peyton C., Minister Joshua Jordan, and our moderator for the evening, Reverend D'Angelo Dia. We call Reverend Dia uh, the point guard, and we called uh, Deborah Dalton the coach because she was switching folks in and out 
with such um, uh, alacrity that, that we are definitely appreciative of her. Thanks to Marco and our Kaya team for giving us the shift to share that. Uh, David Scott Gibson, our Minister of Music, wrote a very moving, beautiful song uh, the day after the death of George Floyd entitled Black Diamond, and my God, it was moving. Amen, amen. And thanks to Brother George Mitchell for accompanying him and D'Angelo Dia for closing out our program with his spoken word. It was absolutely great. It is saved on our website as well as on our Facebook page, and we invite you to join and check that out if you haven't. Also just want to mention that hopefully and prayerfully you all have received an invitation to join us as far as our virtual online church conference on Saturday, June the 25th at 9 o'clock a.m., uh, we'll be presenting our budget. We will let you know or talk to you about uh, re-entry plans um, as well as take any questions as far as those two items are concerned. That will be the highlight as far as our uh, church meeting is concerned. Also today, following this morning's worship experience after the benediction, we ask that you all will stay online and we want to celebrate all of those who have graduated from high school with their diploma, college, with an undergraduate de degree, or those who have gotten uh, post-baccalaureate degrees. We want to announce those who have received scholarships that are administered through our academic resource ministry on behalf of our congregation. So stay tuned after the benediction and before the airing of our church announcements to celebrate and to give shout outs to those who have these monumental achievements and awards. Amen. We're looking forward to uh, that celebration. As we move forward as far as uh, our prayer call is concerned and uh, this morning's time of prayer, uh, there are just several concerns I want to bring before you. We've had a lot of disciples who are experiencing death and we want to flank them with our prayers. Uh, we want to lift up um, uh, Sister Linda Alexander and the passing of her mother Irene Christian uh, those services will take place on this Thursday at 2 o'clock at Trent River Oakey Grove Baptist Church in Jacksonville, North Carolina. Sister Sydney Anthony, the niece of disciple Sister Ivy Jackson, we will let you know of those arrangements. Once they are completed, we want to lift Sister Ivy Jackson and her family up in our prayers. We want to lift up <clears throat> the family of Brother Johnny L. Felton, the father of disciple Veronica Jones, uh, those services were yesterday in Johnston, South Carolina. The family of Brother Johnny Paul Edwards, the brother of Deacon Eric, Eric Edwards, those services were yesterday in Chester, South Carolina. The family of Brother John Arthur Colbert, the, um, um, the brother of Sister Miriam Davis, uh, the family of Sister Margie Addison Spring, the mother of disciple Deborah Donagu, the family of Sister Mary Yellow, the mother of disciple Alfred Yellow, and the family of disciple Mona Lee Miller, the sister of disciple Rose Mongi, Mongo. Rather. And then we also want to lift up Sadie Sturdivant, who is in intensive care. We want to lift up Deacon Michael Underwood, who is recovering from surgery. And we want to flank him in our prayers, as well as continue to lift up uh, Dr. Monica Redman as she continues to recuperate. We know that God not only hears our prayers, but we know that God will answer our prayers according to God's sovereign will. I'm going to ask at this time that uh, Minister Jeffrey Stevenson will come and take us to the throne of grace as we petition God our Father. Let us go to God. Dear Heavenly Father God, we come before you right now. We come before you, God. It seems like we come before you, God, with more questions than we have answers right now. We have those who feel pain. Those who feel sorrow. Those who feel loss. And some don't even know how to feel, God. God, for we look out our windows and we look on our TVs and we see a world that's ravaged with pain. Pain from a pandemic, both of a virus 
in both of oppression and suppression. And God, we know that you're still in control. But that just still does not take away from the questions that we have. Yes. How do we deal with the hearts of men, God, that simply do not like a person because of their skin color? Mm -hmm. But we know, God, that it is not our responsibility, but yours. Because we cannot change the heart of man. We can simply do what we can do, God. We continue to protest in the streets. We continue to call change to legislation. But God, all this time, we are trusting and believing and knowing that you're with us. Yes. Leaning on your everlasting arm. God, for the names that have been called for those that are dealing with loss, that are dealing with death during this time. We ask God for a special blessing for them. Yes. Because it is in this moment, during this pandemic, that they cannot even grieve the way that they need to. Mm -hmm. God, in the late night hour, when they get up and they look for that which once was, God, if you would just hold them in the palm of your hands and let them know that everything is going to be all right. God, we ask a special blessing, God, for those who are dealing with recovery right now. God, if you would just go into the hospital rooms, if you would just go into the houses, God, and just touch and move in a mighty way, in only a way that you can. And God, we just want to say thank you for this place called St. Paul. Thank you for allowing us to, to be able to call out racism in this world. We thank you, God, for the Kaya experience that just took place this past week, God, for the panelists that were able to call out those who do not see others as less than. But God, we still trust you. We still believe in you and we still say thank you, God. Yes, yes, yes. We lean on your everlasting God. And God, as we close out this, this prayer, God, we just ask that you would continue to touch yes, yes. in a mighty way, God. Continue to move, God. Continue to show this world that it does not matter who sits at a White House, God, but that you're still in control. Yes. It is in your son's name that we do pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Minister Jeffrey Stevenson, for that prayer. And we pray that those who are watching us online, that you felt the power and the sincerity of this prayer moment. Amen. Amen. As we move forward, as far as our worship experience is concerned, it is time to give. It is time to give. And as we prepare to give our offering unto the Lord right now, I uh, just want to give this statement before we ask you to give. If there's any person who has lost his or her job, uh, you have been furloughed, you have been laid off, uh, you have been asked to take a severance pay. Um, we're not asking you to give. We're not asking you to give. However, for those of us who still have some income coming in, uh, we're, we're asking you to be very gracious and very generous. We want to bear the uh, weakness that our brothers and sisters may be experiencing financially so that we can be a blessing to them. Amen. However, if you feel led to give, I want you to know that out of your poverty, the richness and the grace of God will be extended to you if you feel led to do that. But we are not expecting for you uh, to, to do that. However, if you want to give, there are three ways you can give here at St. Paul. The first one is to um, give by check or cash. If you want to mail your check to the church, our address is 1401 Allen Street. Charlotte, North Carolina, 28205. We are asking that you do not mail cash. If you want to drop off your offering, call the church first to make sure someone is here, and we'll give you a time in which you can come and drop off your offering. The second way you can give, which is through our website, and you can give through our website through ACS, 
our church life. And then the third way you can give is, of course, through the app called Givelify. You can attach that to your favorite credit card, search for St. Paul Baptist Church, Charlotte, North Carolina, and give in that manner. So if you would, do me this favor. If you would, take your offering, place it in your right hand. We want to give God what's right, not what's left. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we come to you right now, and as we prepare to give our offering unto you, oh God, we pray that you will take these gifts of ours, multiply them in a Godful way so that your word, your will, and your way will go forward through the ministry and the mission of the St. Paul Church. Thank you, oh God, for each and every person that is feeling led to be generous and gracious as far as our tithes and offerings are concerned. We know that there is a promise that is connected to our giving. So move as you only you can, oh God, through our gifts, and we'll glorify and magnify your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. So do me this favor, give, and our uh, uh, singing ensemble will bless you as far as uh, this moment is concerned, and we ask that you will pray for me as I sense what God will do as far as the preaching moment is concerned.
angel on me. The God who governs angel on me. Angel on me has set encampments yes, around me. Encampments yes, all around me. Woo. Protection around me. ensemble that have blessed us with Jehovah Shabbat. We, we are reminded that we serve a God who will fight for us. And uh, thank you all for that wonderful, wonderful reminder. I want to, for the time that is mine, to call your attention. Uh, this is graduation Sunday, and I want to hopefully and prayerfully give a word of inspiration to our graduates in particular, and to all of us uh, as followers of Jesus Christ in general, and to those who may not be sure about a relationship with God through Christ, to give you some insight on why we've connected with this man named Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 4, starting at verse 13 through verse 25, and Today, I'm going to read from a different translation of scripture. I want to read from the message translation because I think that um, this particular passage, this particular version will give us a better appreciative uh, understanding of what Paul was writing. And it reads like this, starting at verse, 10, verse 13 in the message translation. That famous promise God gave Abraham that he and his children would possess the earth it was not given because of something Abraham did or would do. It was based on God's decision to put everything together for him, which Abraham then entered when he believed. If those who get what God gives them only to get it by doing everything they are told to do and filling out all the right forms properly signed that eliminates personal trust completely and turns that promise into an ironclad contract. That's not a holy promise. That's a business deal. A contract drawn up by a hard-nosed lawyer and with plenty of fine print only makes sure that you will never be able to collect. But if there is no contract in the first place, simply a promise, and God's promise at that, you can't break it. This is why the fulfillment of God's promise depends entirely on trusting God and his way and then simply embracing him and what he does. God's promise all arrives as pure gift. It is the only way everyone can be sure to get in on it. Those who keep the religious traditions and those who have never heard of them. For Abraham is father of us all. He is not our racial father. That's reading the story backwards. He is our faith father. We call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, 
but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Isn't that what we always read in scripture? God said to Abraham, I set you up as father of many peoples. And Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do only what God could do, raise the dead to life with a word making something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway, deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of peoples. God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family, Abraham. Abraham did not focus on his impotence and said, it's hopeless. This hundred-year-old body could never father a child, nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He did not tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautiously skeptical questions. He plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God, sure that God would make good on what God said. That's why it is said Abraham declared fit, was declared fit before God by trusting God to set him right. But it is not just Abraham. It is us also. The same thing gets said about us who, when we embrace and believe the one who brought Jesus to life when the conditions were equally hopeless, the sacrifice Jesus made us fit for God, set us right with God. I want to preach for the time that is mine, living beyond your limits. Living beyond your limits. This is Graduate Sunday, and we come to celebrate those who have graduated from high school and from college. We come to celebrate those who have received uh, master degrees and specialist degrees and doctoral degrees. We come to celebrate those who have graduated from community college and got their associate degree. We come to lift up and thank God because for quite a few of you all, you have exceeded limits as far as your life is concerned. You've gone beyond what you thought you could do, but certainly what others thought you would achieve. And yet, regardless of whether you are a graduate or you're just trying to make it through this thing called life, we find ourselves right now dealing with some trying circumstances in our current reality that if we're not careful, has the ability to cripple our resolve and hinder our purpose due to the uncertainty of those things we thought were stable and trustworthy. Somewhere in our past, most of us drank the proverbial Kool-Aid, and now we are sick and suffering because we believe the hype the culture gave us. We were told that if you go to school, if you work real hard, keep your nose clean, then you will do well in today's world. We were told, make investments in your 401ks and the stock market so you can have retirement income and savings. We were told, buy a house because it's one of the surest commodities you will ever have. We were told, make sure you take care of yourself, eat healthy, exercise so you can do well as far as your body is concerned. The unfortunate reality is uh, that right now, under the sound of my breath and those that are watching us live stream, a whole lot of you all have done everything by the book and find yourself on the short end of life. The unfortunate reality is I have persons who have graduated from college and can't find a job. Protests across this country around this world against racism and police oppression have brought light to things black folks have been dealing with for 400 years. We have been well acquainted with being despised because of the color of our skin. We know what it's like to lose a job because of race. 
We know what it's like to not be able to live in a certain neighborhood because of our race or to be denied a bank loan because of our race or to have our health concerns dismissed because of our race or to deal with environmental injustice because of our race or to have people think we are a thief because of our race or to have people think we lack intelligence because of our race or being constantly harassed and arrested because of our race. The slips and the underwear of the racists are showing. COVID-19 is worsening in the United States even as I speak. Americans have been banned to travel to the European Union. Isn't that something? We who are supposed to be uh, the brightest and most educated, the most sophisticated country in the world, we look more like a third world country right now, Mr. 46 minus one. We have nearly 10 million infections worldwide and 500 deaths with the United States leading the way as far as that's concerned with 25% of these deaths. The craziness being perpetuated through conspiracy theorists about wearing masks and physical distancing and avoiding mass gatherings is going to keep us in a mess. I don't think we're going to see any real progress or return to some sense of functionality until maybe, maybe the spring of 2021. We are enduring some tough times. Now, I would readily admit, you can wallow in despair and curse the darkness with a war is me attitude, or you can take what is happening on the national landscape and the global scene as an opportunity to make some necessary changes that will place you in line with the shakeup that God is creating. You can allow yourself to become limited by this pandemic or position yourself to reap benefits, which is more than economics. If you want to achieve your dreams, realize visions, aspire for higher heights, and do the impossible in a time when talk like this seems insensible and illogical, you got to learn how to operate from a position of faith. If you're not willing to, if you're willing to go beyond the limits of your life and exceed what you have, it will not be predicated upon your education, socialization, political affiliation, or status. It will have to be based upon your faith in the God you cannot see. Our ability to recognize, receive, and rejoice in what God has done, in what God is doing, and in what God will do in our lives is based upon faith alone. The God we serve is keenly aware of what's happening in our everyday life and is preparing a wonderful setup for us even in a pandemic situation coupled with social upheaval because of racism and police brutality. Yes, God is alive. Yes, God is active. Yes, God is able, but you and I will not be able to appreciate and apply these truths or walk in this power unless we have faith. In fact, God has already given you victory. Yes, God has already released your miracle. Yes, God has already declared your deliverance, but you can't get it unless you have faith. God has been good to you, and the Lord is blessing you even right now. And I would dare say in 2020, the best is still yet to come. Your breakthrough is right around the corner, but you can't shout about it unless you have faith. Faith is the necessary component for us to go beyond the limits of our living that have been set for us and others have placed on us. In fact, when you look at everything around you and everything existing right now, it is here because somebody somewhere had faith. You don't live in the reality you have just based upon great ideas or new inventions or political risk or social critique. Somebody had to have faith their idea would work. Somebody had to have faith their invention would be successful. Somebody had to have faith their risk would be worth it. Somebody had to have faith their critique will make a difference. 
You can't do something that has never been done without faith, which gives the capacity to exceed what you are accustomed to doing. That's why we have cars, trains, planes, rockets, and satellites. This is why we have computers, iPhones, iPads, Samsung notebooks, and Galaxy phones, and navigation systems. This is why we have beautiful high-rise architecture, luscious landscapes where there were trash dumps, and the ability to see billions of light years into space. It required faith. When Martin Luther went to Wittenberg and nailed his 95 complaints, against the Pope and the Roman Catholic Church, therefore starting the Protestant Reformation, it was by faith. When Copernicus proposed that the earth revolved around the sun and not the other way around, it was by faith. When Galileo tested the telescope and discovered other planetary bodies like the rings around Saturn and moons around Jupiter, it was by faith. When the Puritans fled England, because of religious persecution and rolled the Mayflower through the storms on the Atlantic to Plymouth, Massachusetts. It was by faith. When Harriet Tubman led 300 slaves to freedom with a Bible and a pistol, it was by faith. When Thomas Edison and that black man, Louis Latimer, invented the light bulb, it was by faith. When Martin Luther King Jr. spoke against the Vietnam War, being ridiculed by blacks and whites alike, but he was on the right side of history, it was by faith. When Nelson Mandela did not bend or break in a prison on Robbins Island, only to be released and become South Africa's first black president, it was by faith. When a skinny black guy with a funny name, with a white mama and a Kenyan daddy, became the first black president of the United States, it was by faith. When a black car, NASCAR driver named Bubba told NASCAR the Confederate flags need to go, it was by faith. Uh, when protesters marched against systemic racism and police brutality and the relics to white supremacy began to fall, even in the state of Mississippi, they are finally getting rid of uh, the Confederate emblem on the flag, uh, it was by faith. And when a man hung on a Christ, on a cross between two thieves on a Friday afternoon, buried in a borrowed tomb, and got up from the grave three days later and declared, I got all power in my hand, it was by faith. If you're going to exceed any limit in your reality, you got to do it by faith. I want to suggest to you this is what the Apostle Paul presents as he hammers out his thesis for the following example of Abraham. We all have heard of Abraham, and for those of you who have not, Abraham is in the Bible in the book of Genesis, and Abraham really becomes the progenitor for the nation of Israel. Abraham is considered to be the father of many nations. As a matter of fact, those who practice Christianity and Judaism and Islam all of them trace their roots back to this man named Abraham. Abraham heard the voice of God and stepped out on faith, going to a land for which he had no direction. Abraham was willing to trust God all the way on his journey. Abraham did not have a map. Abraham did not have a GPS system. Abraham did not have a navigation system. All he did was obey what he perceived to be the voice of God. Sure, he made some mistakes along the way. Sure, he had some blunders along the map. But Abraham's relationship with God was not based upon his righteousness. It was not based upon him dotting every I nor crossing every T. But it was based upon the grace of God in his life. God made a promise to Abraham and to Abraham's offspring how they would one day inherit the earth. Therefore, the promise God made to Abraham was not dependent upon Abraham keeping a whole bunch of rules. It was based upon Abraham's faith. The law did not have the ability to make the promise of God valid and real. But Abraham's faith is what made this thing real. 
Interestingly, the very thing the Jews had been depending on to make them acceptable to God turned out to emphasize their sinfulness. The law reveals their shortcoming. The law demonstrates the lack of their innate ability to do everything that God had commanded them to do. The law was a catch-22 situation because every time they got one aspect of the law right, they failed in another area of the law, which means that the area they had right becomes null and void. Why is that? Because it was the common assertion that if you violated one commandment of the law, you violated all of them. This law thing was difficult to sustain. And it helped the Jews to understand that they are just like the Gentiles uh, in need of the grace of God. The law reveals that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So the relationship Abraham has with God is not predicated upon the law, but is based upon faith. God lets Abraham have a divine connection, not based upon money, not based upon education, family lineage, social status, political affiliation, or neighborhood association. The hookup is based upon Abraham's faith and a promise made by a God he never saw but all he heard and he believed that God is no shorter than his word. Abraham could not mess up the promise no matter how hard he tried because God chose Abraham it was not the other way around I want to let you all know that if we were to describe Abraham uh, into today's terms if you were to look at the limitations and the deficits that Abraham had uh, Abraham was messed up from the floor up uh, if Abraham was alive today he'll be described as an AARP card carrying social security receiving Medicare Medicaid accepting Bengay ointment applying just for men, gray solution hair washing, Viagra, Cialis, Levitra pill popping self, how he was going to be the father of many nations. This is a problem because Abraham and Sarah were past childbearing age. To complicate matters even further, after God had dropped this major momentous promise on Abraham, it didn't come to pass until another 14 years later. Now, if there was ever a couple who had the odds stacked against them, it was certainly Abraham and Sarah. They didn't fit the profile of being the father and the mother of many nations. Their time had passed. They were considered to be old and outdated. They were looking forward to retirement when God invaded their reality and proclaimed, I got something else for you to do. I'm not through with you yet. You're going to be the father and the mother of many nations. You're going to have so many descendants. It's going to be like the stars in the sky. So many until you will not be able to count. If this is going to occur, it will require for Abraham and Sarah to rise above their restrictions, transcend their confinements, and go beyond their limits. They were limited by age, social conditions, and barrenness. And there are some of us who are limited by age, socioeconomic conditions, or lack of education. Some of us limited because we were born on the wrong side of the tracks. Uh, some of us limited because we've been incarcerated. Some of us limited because we did not have a mother or a father when we were growing up. Some of us limited because we did not finish high school. Some of us limited because we did not go to college. Some of us are limited because of racism, the wrong skin color, sexism, the wrong gender, classism, the wrong financial level. Some of us are limited by our own negative perceptions of a devalued self-worth, which has us thinking we can't do anything because of our past, or we can't succeed because we lack certain skills, or we will not be able to attain the desires of our heart. However, there's a word that Paul gives us, insight, that if Abraham can do it and he had the odds stacked against him then you and I can do it even when the odds are stacked against us how can we go beyond the limits of life which makes us feel like this is the best we can have right now 
I want to suggest when you look at the text, first of all, realize the God that loves us has divine-sized dreams for our life. This is best described in verses 13 and 14. Because when you look at Abraham, you will notice God enters into Abraham's life with two things. The first thing is how Abraham will inherit a land that God will show him. Second, that Abraham will be the father of many nations. This is not something Abraham had imagined when he was hanging out in Haran with his daddy Terah. He was part of a family that worshipped idols. And God stepped into his reality and blows his mind by promising him land acquisition and a large family. Abraham moves not by what he can see, but Abraham moves uh, by a word he hears. Uh, and that word uh, has been delivered uh, from the God uh, that speaks into existence that which Abraham could not imagine. Yet Abraham had to believe it was possible because if Abraham did not believe it was possible, he would have stayed in Haran with his daddy worshiping idol gods. Check this out. Faith begins with a picture, a mental image, a dream, a vision of something which does not exist and seems rather impossible to come to fruition. God had to show Abram a visual perspective of a faith proposition. And this is what God told Abram. This is what he said. Here is something, Abraham, you can visualize. Abraham, every night you go out and you look up into the skies and you can say, this is going to be the size of my family. The entire Jewish nation came from the loins of Abraham. And later God would change Abram's name to Abraham for he will be the father of many nations. And this happened when Abraham was a hundred years old. This requires major faith because God's dreams for your life has to become part of your imagination to see things others cannot see, to do things others will not do, and to believe things that others will not believe. God has to stretch your imagination by giving you a dream, a vision. What can you see yourself doing that you thought you never could do? What can you conceive and believe you can achieve? Faith starts by stretching your imagination to hook up with God's dream for your life. Faith is not past oriented, but it is future focused. Faith is you visualizing what your future is in your present. I know there are certain things you can't see in your present, but God has shown them to you. You can't see how you're going to get the degree but you saw the degree hanging on your wall. You can't see how you're going to get the house, but you saw yourself in your own living room. You can't see how you're going to make it, but you saw yourself as successful. There are some things you can't see in your present, but God is showing you something, and you got to take the initiative to make the dream God has for you your reality. So what is it that you got to do? You got to go to school. You got to get an education. You got to prepare yourself. You got to read a book. You got to get out of debt. You got to pay off your credit cards. Listen to self-improvement tapes. Go to Bible study. Join a church. Get into the word of God. Pray to our God. Fast every now and then. Give God some praise and worship the Lord of the universe. If you do some of those things, I guarantee God will blow your mind with the things that God has for your life. But then... Do what you can do and trust God to fill in the gaps. That's in verses 17, 17 through 22. We see that God is a gap filler. In other words, beloved, don't focus on your weakness, but operate in your strength. Abraham had several strikes against him. Number one, his age. He was old. Number two, where he came from. His daddy was an idol worshiper. Number three, his wife's barrenness. 
And then number four, his mistake to try to jump ahead of God. But what Abraham had, in spite of all of that, was faith. And this is how Abraham operated in his reality. What scriptures consider as faith is defined by the confidence of Abraham in the very promises of God. Abraham's faith is seen in the contrasting phrases against all hope and in hope. From a human standpoint, there was no hope that he would have descendants. And yet with God, all things are possible. Therefore, Abraham believed what God said would come to pass. Abraham believed what God said would come into fruition. And Abraham's hope was not in the invincible human spirit to rise to the occasion against all odds. But his hope, his faith was in the inner confidence that God is no shorter than his word. In other words, Abraham believed it, that if God said it, that should settle it. Because Abraham believed, Abraham became. Abraham was fully aware that his body was as good as dead. He's a hundred years old, you all. Sarah is past childbearing age. From a common sense human perspective, there is not the slightest chance that they would have any children. But Abraham somehow kept the faith. And his faith went beyond his human capacity. In acknowledging the existence of the God who is not bound by the limitations of our created order, wherever God is, there is nothing outside of the realm of possibility. And the church of Jesus Christ is in desperate need of those who will insist that God is able to bring to pass anything that is consistent with the nature of God and in concert with God's redemptive purposes. The problem with the church that it is filled with people whose view of God is too small. If you want to know what faith without works look like is dead, then all you got to do is look at Abraham. Abraham knew, uh, yes, I got faith, uh, but I still got to do my part. And if I do my part, I believe that God will show up uh, and do God's part. In order for Abraham uh, to get the land, uh, Abraham had to leave his daddy's house and start walking. In order for Abraham and Sarah to have a child, they had to at least engage in lovemaking every now and then. And the same thing has to happen for you and I. That if we want the promises of God to come to pass, we got to do our part and let God fill in the gaps. If you want a job, you better put in an application. If you want to pass the test, open up your book and study. If you want to improve your credit rating, you got to pay off your debts. If you want to have a good marriage, be a good spouse if you want to get closer to God get in God's word and among God's people if you want systemic changes in our society keep fighting against the status quo through protests marching raising your voice filling out the census registering the votes going out to vote and staying on those who have been elected if you want to grow in your faith get down on your knees and start talking to God and if you want to experience the presence of God I dare you to be crazy enough to lift up holy hands cry out with a loud voice and worship the God of the universe uh, but one more thing that I want to remind you of that if you want to have a life beyond your limits you got to connect to Jesus who goes beyond the limits of this world connect your life to Jesus who goes beyond the limits of this world let me say it one more time connect your life to Jesus, who's God in the flesh, who goes beyond the limits of this world. This is the shout for me in this whole text. And it's found right there in verses 23 through 25. This is where, this is where Paul zooms in and says, I've been talking about Father Abraham. Now I want to talk about Jesus Christ because Jesus had the odds stacked against him. Abraham trusts God when it did not make any sense to trust God. And when you understand that Abraham did not give way to unbelief, but rather Abraham's faith was strengthened 
during his times of testing. And during the times of testing, he took God at his word. And when he took God at his word, God got the glory. Faith is strong precisely because it looks solely to God and not upon human ability. It is not that faith ignores or denies historical realities. Rather, Paul says, Abraham took them fully into account, which is why his faith can be called strong. Abraham took fully into account that he was old. Abraham took fully into account that the odds were stacked against him. Abraham took fully into account that his wife, Sarah, was barren. Abraham took fully into account that he was past what society said could be accomplished. He had all of that, but Abraham was convicted and convinced by the promise that God, if he said it, can bring it to pass. This is what faith has to be if you're going to live a life beyond your limits. It was a faith so convinced and so convicted how God could bring life out of something dead and accomplish what is humanly impossible because the reference to Abraham and Sarah's body is that they were physically dead. There's no life in neither one of them that there is nothing as far as Abraham's functionality as far as his manhood was concerned that would bring about life there was nothing in Sarah's femininity as far as her womanhood was concerned that they could bring life you got two dead folks trying to come together and produce something lifelike when they didn't have the capacity to produce anything lifelike but it was a God who is beyond their uh, experiences and the God that was beyond their limits that took both of their dead bodies and brought something to life out of their dead barren situations and this is where the shift uh, happens for us when we make the shift to Jesus Christ because we know that Jesus Christ uh, is uh, the one uh, that was raised from the dead uh, and that God gave life uh, out of an impossible situation our faith uh, will be regarded in the same light uh, because God will credit righteousness to us as well. Verse 23 through 25 shows us that when you have faith, in the Jesus Christ who was resurrected from the dead you have faith in the one that can make a difference in your life this was the central theme of the gospel message the resurrection of Jesus Christ this is what the apostles preached nearly 2,000 years ago that Jesus Christ was crucified and God raised him from the dead but it has to be y'all the way we live our life you and I must understand that, that our life has to be lived, watch this, from a perspective of having Jesus in our life. And not just some Jesus, but the one that God has raised from the dead. This is because God gives us the ability to do things that others said that's impossible. Because if God can raise Jesus from the dead, then God can do anything. And that's where a whole lot of us are right now. Some of us find ourselves limited uh, from a crisis that happened a while ago. A shameful problem from our past. Uh, we went through divorce and we felt like we'll never find love again. We've been bankrupt and we think we can never have good credit again. We've had a major embarrassment that everybody in the church knew about. Uh, but faith is speaking to you right now. And faith is saying to you, yeah, you messed up in your past yes you didn't dot every i in your past yes you didn't cross every t in your past yes you've made some blunders along the way but we are not here to focus on your past because we got something better for your future i don't know who the whom i'm preaching to that's in the house right now or watching me live stream but i am here to let somebody know that you can't be so consumed by your past until you miss out on the promises God has for your future. I don't know about you, but I'm going to be future oriented and not stuck 
in my past. I want to see what God has in store for my life because if I'm moving and if I'm breathing and if the blood is running warm in my veins, then God ain't through with me yet. I want to see what God will have for me to become, not what I have been and not what I am right now, but what God wants to do in my life. In other words, I'm not going to be satisfied with the status quo, but I'm going to move and press forward toward those things which are ahead. When you have faith in God and it's based upon the resurrected Jesus Christ, it will give you access to the powers and the purpose and the provisions and the promises of the almighty God. How do you break out of patterns of procrastination? How do you get out of your rut? How do you take some risk? How do you expect for the best? How do you wait for an answer? How do you live beyond your limits? You got to live your life with Jesus Christ in it. The mess you must be going through right now ain't nothing compared to the promises that God has in store for you. That means, beloved, that if you're watching me, live stream that means my sisters and brothers if you're listening to me in the sanctuary you got to be willing to engage in a faith that looks crazy to everybody else but you know what God has dropped in your spirit you got to be willing to engage in a faith that looks stupid to everybody else but you know the promises that God has dropped in your spirit because when you are connected to the living Lord Jesus Christ you're connected to the somebody that God can do anything through. Uh, this means uh, that even though you're limited by your personal deficits, uh, even though you're limited uh, by your economic status, uh, even though you're limited uh, by emotional fatigue, uh, even though you're limited uh, by psychological weariness, even though you're limited uh, by academic shortcomings, even though you're limited by your negative circumstances, uh, if you look to Jesus, who's the author and the finisher of your faith, then you hook up with the one that is able to do exceedingly above anything you ask, think, or imagine. I don't know who this word is for. You can have whoever you want to, but I'm sticking with Jesus. You can do whatever you want to, but I'm sticking with Jesus. You can roll with whoever you want to, but I'm sticking with Jesus. You can flow however you want to, but but I'm sticking with Jesus because when we're hungry, Jesus is bread of heaven. When we're thirsty, Jesus is water in dry places. When we are sad, he is our joy. When we are lost, he is our guide. When we are afraid, he is our security. When we are poor, he is our riches. When we are hurt, he is our healing. When we are needy, he is our supply when we are fighting he is our battle axe when we are bound he is our freedom when we are wounded he is our balm in Gilead when we are dying he's the resurrection and the life when we are singing he is our music when we are teaching he is our example when we are praying he is our intercessor when we are worshiping he is our God God, uh, and I don't know who I'm talking to uh, but I'm going to stick with Jesus uh, because Jesus becomes uh, the very one that shows me how uh, to live above uh, and beyond my limits uh, you can have the cares of this world uh, but give me Jesus uh, you can have gold and silver uh, but give me Jesus uh, you can have your fine car uh, but give me Jesus uh, you can have your mansion on a hill uh, but give me Jesus uh, you can have admission into the fine clubs of society, but give me Jesus. You can have your fraternity and sorority, but give me Jesus. You can have your fancy church buildings, but give me Jesus. Because do I have anybody that know that Jesus is the best thing that ever has happened to me? Why can I shout and why can I give praise about this Jesus? Because he was hung up for my hang-ups. Uh, he was
was messed up uh, for my mistakes. Uh, he died uh, on an old rugged cross. Uh, run Friday afternoon. Uh, the devil thought he had him. Uh, the grave thought he secured him. Uh, death knew he got him. Uh, but he stayed in that grave uh, all night Friday night. Uh, he stayed in that grave uh, all day Saturday. He stayed in the grave uh, all night Saturday night. Uh, but do I have anybody uh, that's watching me uh, on live stream? Uh, they ain't afraid to shout uh, at the computer or phone uh, or your television uh, early. Good God Almighty. I said early, early, uh, early. One Sunday morning, uh, he got up uh, from the grave uh, with all power uh, in his hand. Uh, but thanks be to God, uh, he didn't stop there. Uh, he stayed around uh, for 40 more days uh, teaching his disciples uh, what they needed to know. Uh, and on that 40th day, uh, he ascended uh, into heaven, uh, told his disciples, uh, go wait in Galilee, uh, in Jerusalem, because uh, I'm going to send you something. Uh, that's going to help you on your journey and on the 10th day after his ascension the Holy Ghost fell and gave them power power to preach power to teach power to live power to love power to heal power to forgive power to lift power to serve power to run power to preach power to worship power to praise Power to sing, power to minister, power to do mission. Is there anybody here that know you got power to live beyond your limits? So whatever the devil throws your way, tell the devil, tell society, tell the culture, throw your best shot because he that's within me is greater than the world around me. Is there anybody that ain't afraid to give God praise? Cause you can go beyond your limit. You can go beyond. You can go beyond. You can go beyond. You can go beyond your limit. Oh yes you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Ask. Ask any person that you know the doctor said we've done all we can and they're still alive. Ask any person who's had so many doors closed in her face until she wanted to give up and look at where she is in business right now. Ask. Ask any child who is differently able why they did not give up. And you will see God operating to take them beyond their limits. We all, <laughs> we all have limits. We all have limits. Let me just say that before. We all got limits. But we serve a God who can help us to push beyond those limits. I want to invite you to have a moment of word of prayer at this time, and I want to lead you to a net connection with the God who will help you to move beyond your limits, even right now. Even with all this craziness going on, we serve a God who is still moving and operating and empowering and flowing as far as our limits are concerned. As a matter of fact, Paul put it best. And Paul said, in... My weakness, his strength is perfected. I want to lead you in a prayer, a prayer of new life, a prayer of a brand new start. And if this prayer makes sense with you, I want you to connect with God through confessing faith in Jesus Christ, the one who really is the limit breaker and will help you transcend your limits. So if you would, wherever you are right now, just bow your heads. For all of us who have that relationship with God, it's a reminder of that covenant. But for those who do not, or for those who are seeking a reaffirmation, a connection, I'm going to ask you soon to make a decision. All heads bowed, all eyes closed.
and repeat after me. God, I thank you for allowing me to hear this word. And I believe that you are able to help me live beyond my limits. I come to you because I want a relationship with you. I believe you sent Jesus to die for my sins. I believe you raised him from the dead three days later. I believe that one day he will return. But until then, send your Holy Spirit into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. Help me be the person you want me to be. And God, do your great thing in my life. I submit to you right now in the name of your son Jesus, my Savior and my Lord. Amen. If you prayed this prayer for the first time in your life, and you mean it, you want a relationship with God, you have it right now. Is it really that easy? Sure. If you believe in your head and your heart, if you believe in your mind and your spirit, you're trusting those words and you're placing your confidence in God, then salvation is yours. It's really that easy. You're not saved based upon your works. You're saved by faith because of God's grace. And if that's you right now and you want that relationship with God and you want to become a part of the Lord's church, particularly here at St. Paul's, you could do several things. Number one, you can type salvation. If you're on Facebook, one of our digital ministers will send you a private message. If you're on our website, click on salvation button in the chat window. If you're on telephone, email us, connect at St. Paul, uh, sbpcbcnc.org, or you could call the church office. If you want to join by Christian Experience, you can join us on YouTube, connect at spbcnc.org. Uh, if you are watching us, as far as Facebook is concerned, just type connect on our Facebook page or connect on our website. Or if you want to join by Watch Care, which means that you're here on a temporary assignment, you don't want to give up your church home, but you want to roll with us until you return home, you could type Watch Care or follow those same prompts that I've just mentioned to you and uh, join us as far as that's concerned. We are about to close today's worship experience. I want you to share your worship profile. I want you to uh, send hearts or thumbs up if this has been a blessing to you. Or if you have a concern, you may be able to share that as well. We're getting ready to close out, but as we close out, please stay online and check out our wonderful graduates as far as graduation Sunday is concerned. And let's be giving them a word of encouragement. And now to him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless for the presence of his glory with all exceeding joy. To the only wise Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. And the people of God said, Amen. And God loves you and so do I. Amen. Follow us this week to check out what's happening here at St. Paul. God bless you. God loves you and so do I. Sherelle Fuller, or Miss Sherelle to many of you, and I am co-chair of the St. Paul Academic Resource Ministry. I am so excited and honored to bring this congratulatory message to all of our St. Paul graduates. The second half of your academic year has definitely not been normal by any stretch of the imagination, but we want you to know that even in the midst of a pandemic and cultural crisis, your church family wanted to find a way to celebrate all of you. Whether you're receiving your high school diploma, associate's, bachelor's, or master's degree, this is an amazing accomplishment. For you all to complete all your graduation requirements with such uncertainty and chaos around you shows that you are resilient, persistent, and faithful, all important characteristics for you as you move forward to the next part of your journey. 
whatever that is, know that your St. Paul Church family is here to pray for, encourage, and support you. Commencement means to begin or to start. What seems like the ending of this part of your academic careers is really the beginning. Commence to change the world one day at a time. Commence to share the love of Christ wherever you are. Commence to grow spiritually, emotionally, and socially. Nelson Mandela said that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Take the skills and knowledge that God has blessed you with and change the world, graduates. Congratulations, and may God continue to bless you in all your future endeavors. Hey, graduates. This is Pastor Peyton here to congratulate you all on a job well done. I'm even wearing one of my high school baseball t-shirts, still in disbelief that I graduated from high school six years ago. Jeez, that's crazy, right? Time goes by so fast, but life is made up of awesome moments like these. Uh, Y'all made this moment possible, and let me be yet another person to congratulate each one of you for graduating from high school. This accomplishment is nothing to take lightly. Each of you has earned that diploma. And after this past school year, you can be proud of yourselves for finishing your high school careers while under quarantine, too. That's a resume builder if I've ever heard one, I promise you that. Yet still, I know for many of you, I'm sure this is a bittersweet feeling. The last stretch of your senior year was completed at home, and many of you didn't get to celebrate the way you had hoped for with your family and friends. However, don't let that steal your joy. God has brought you through it, and He will continue to be with you as you continue on your journey. Wherever God leads you to go, whether it's into the military, trade school, a four-year university, or community college, I want you to know that St. Paul is with you. As your youth pastor, know that our relationship does not end when you begin your next chapter. I'd love to be a resource for each one of you as you continue down the path you're on. Whatever your next steps are, make sure God is a part of them. If you're staying in town, continue to be a part of the St. Paul community here and come be a part of our young adult group. If you're going off to college or beginning a new life and moving elsewhere, then I want to encourage you to get plugged into a college ministry and or some kind of church community as soon as possible. That community will be important as you continue to grow into the godly men and women God has created you to be. Before I go, I want you to remember this. You are worthy, you are loved, and you belong to Jesus. And let me remind you that you are God's masterpiece. One of my favorite verses, Ephesians 2.10, says, For we are God's handiwork, or masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Again, let me say congratulations, graduates. Go share your light and the love of God wherever you go. We will be praying for you and cheering you on every step of the way. Hello there to the graduates of the St. Paul Baptist Church. I am so honored to be addressing you at this time and how godly proud I am of your academic achievements that God has allowed for you to obtain at this particular time. It is rather unfortunate that due to the pandemic, we cannot celebrate you the way that you deserve to be celebrated. For those who are graduating from high school and college, as well as those who are getting advanced degrees, God knows I wish you could be at the sanctuary where your church family can stand up and applaud you as one for this monumental achievement that God has allowed for you to gather at this time. However, I do want to take this opportunity to say that God is so, so amazed at your steadfastness and your faithfulness to your work. First of all, to the high school students who were not able to have the graduation that you deserve, I want you to know that God has even greater things in store for you. For those that may be getting ready to go off to college, I am praying for you. For those that are getting ready to enter the workforce, I am delighted for you. For those who may be getting ready to go into military service, my prayer is that God will keep you. You have a bright and exuberant future that God really wants to bring to fruition. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and who are the called according to his purpose. COVID-19 cannot thwart the purpose that God has for your life. So if you're getting ready to go to school as far as to pursue your baccalaureate degree, God bless you 
You get ready to enter the workforce. God sustain you. You're getting ready to go into the military service. God keep you. For those who have graduated from college with your baccalaureate degree or associate degree or an advanced degree, wow, you've come a long way. You saw it through. You stuck with your course. And you finished this leg of your race. And I want you to know how excited I am for your next chapter that you're getting ready to write. As you move forward, as far as your life is concerned, my prayer is that the Lord, like the flower that is getting ready to bloom, will open up great possibilities to you so you can see the hand of God that is working in concert with the hard, diligent work you put forth. I am absolutely amazed at anyone who graduates from college because there are a lot of things that could have gotten you off track. But the hand of God kept you steadfast and unmovable. And for that, I am so appreciative. So I, along with your St. Paul Church family, celebrate you and we thank God for you. God knows we wish you could be here in the sanctuary where you can hear the shout and the cheers of your loving church family. But since not, at this time, because we are live streaming, I'm going to ask that as we thank God for you, that people will send hearts your way and let you know how proud they are of you. Listen, God loves you. God is proud of you. And as your pastor, I am too. May the blessing of God, the destiny that God has crafted and created for you, when you see that come to fruition, you give God the glory. And remember, God did not allow for you to get your diploma or your degrees so you could just rest on them. But God is looking for you to bring God glory through your service to your sisters and brothers in humanity. God bless you. I love you. I can't wait to see you all back in this sanctuary and take care of yourself. And I'll see you soon. Introducing our high school, college, and graduate school graduates at St. Paul Baptist Church for 2020. Congratulations to Mr. Jalen Ahmed Bracy, graduating from Mallard Creek High School with a 4.22 GPA. He participated in the baseball team and received three varsity team awards. He's a member of the National Technical Honor Society and the French Honor Society. He plans to attend North Carolina State University in the fall in Raleigh, North Carolina, majoring in engineering. Next is Mr. Dion L. Childs II. He is graduating from North Carolina Virtual Academy. He plans to attend Living Arts College in Raleigh, North Carolina in fall, majoring in animation and game design. Next we have Miss Kennedy B. Frazier. She graduated from Rocky River High School. She was a sophomore class president, a CMS after school enrichment program volunteer, and the 2020 RRHS Legacy Award and Scholarship Recipient. She plans to go to Shaw University in the fall in Raleigh, North Carolina and majoring in elementary education. Next we have Mix Alexis Lauren Jackson. She graduates from Cato Middle College High School with a 4.3 GPA. She was on the President's List, the National Honor Society, the Student Government Association, participated in track and field and cross country. She was inducted in the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society, a member of the St. Paul Youth Ushers Team. She received an award as a color guard at East Mecklenburg High School. She received scholarships from the M. Lamel W. Oates Scholarship, the 100 Black Men with a Purpose Scholarship, and the STEM Camp Counselor at Smithfield Elementary School Outstanding Achievement Award. She plans to attend East Carolina University in the fall in Greenville, North Carolina, majoring in nursing. 
Next we have Ms. Brenda Bakaya Kennedy. She is graduating from Fairfield Central High School with a 5.039 GPA. She has received an award as the Most Outstanding Calculus I student, the Most Outstanding Physics II student, the Most Outstanding Elementary Calculus student, Principal List, the First Place Campaign Skit, the Columbia Urban League Athletics and Academic Awards. She plans to attend the University of South Carolina Upstate this fall in Spartanburg, South Carolina, majoring in biology with a concentration in pre-physician assistant. Next, we have Ms. Shelby Lynn Perry. She graduates from East Mecklenburg High School with a 3.8 GPA. She has participated as the East Mech Student Body Vice President and as a St. Paul Girl Scout Ambassador. She plans to attend the University of North Carolina at Pembroke in the fall, majoring in mass communications. Next, we have Mr. Jawan Emmanuel Shans. He was graduating from Independence High School. He received a first place award in the Contrusion Contest, the highest EOC English one grade in the class. He plans to attend Central Piedmont Community College in the fall in Charlotte, North Carolina, majoring in communications. Next, we have Mr. Elijah Montgomery White. He graduates from Harding University High School, and he plans to attend Charlotte Piedmont Community College in Charlotte, North Carolina this fall, studying in finance. Next, we have Ms. Raven Danielle White. She's graduated from the Performance Learning Center, and she plans to attend Full Sail University in Winter Park, Florida, studying and majoring in animation. Next, we have Ms. Alana Leona Whitley. She's graduating from Stuart Kramer High School. She received language honors in Spanish and plans to attend North Carolina A&T University in Charlotte, North Carolina in the fall, studying pre-law and minoring in music. Mr. Malin James Curry, who graduates from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill with a major in public relations and political science and a minor in English. He received the highest honors as a graduate he was elected the Kappa Omicron Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated Black Male of the Year 2020, and he was a scholar, a Renwick B. Author Scholar for eight semesters. Mr. Curry plans to enter into the workforce after his graduation. Mr. Keontae J. Easter graduates from Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia where he majored in pastoral counseling and life coaching, earning the honors of magna cum laude upon graduation. His future plans are to pursue a North Carolina clinical mental health and counseling licensure. Mr. Eric Demetrius Edwards, graduated from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro, majoring in political science. And in the fall, he plans to attend Duke Divinity School, where he wants to seek to obtain his Master's of Divinity degree. Mrs. Emily Dia graduates from Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts, where she earned a Master's of Education in Learning and Instruction. She plans to continue her role as an MS Academic Dean and 8th grade teacher. Miss Antonio Denise Nance graduates from Fayetteville State University in Fayetteville, North Carolina with a 3.9 grade point average with a master's in business administration focusing on health care. She received the honor in the Beta Gamma Sigma International Business Honor Society and she plans to enroll in a JD program focusing on business law. Miss Janae C. Stitt graduates from North Carolina A&T University out of Greensboro, North Carolina with a 3.5 GPA. 
she received a Master's of Science in Clinical Mental Health Counseling. She also received a certification for Rehabilitation Counseling and Behavioral Addictions. She was inducted into the Chi Sigma Iota Counseling Academic and Professional Honor Society International, and she plans to receive a counselor's licensure in the North Carolina Greater Triad Area. Good morning. On behalf of the Academic Resource Ministry and the Men of Valor, we are so excited to be celebrating our scholarship recipients today. The Academic Resource Ministry, along with Men of Valor, had an amazing time going through applications and having interviews with these amazing young people. And we're so excited to be with you today to present these scholarships. We were so impressed by all of them. And we just know that they're going to go on to do great things and make their St. Paul, Paul family happy. So we want to go ahead and start with our first scholarship, which is the Men of Valor Scholarship. This is our Men's Fellowship. Keontae Easter is representing the Men of Valor. This scholarship is a $1,000 scholarship, and it will be awarded to Eric Deese. <laughs> <laughs> you did that! You did that! Yeah. <laughs> Eric will be attending St. Augustine University in the fall. Congratulations! Our next scholarship recipient will be receiving the General St. Paul Scholarship in the amount of $1,000, and it will be awarded to Miss Alana Whitley. Woo! <laughs> Alana will be attending North Carolina A&T State University in the fall. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> the next scholarship is for $2,000 and will be awarded to Shelby Perry. <laughs> You grab your bag. Yes. We'll elbow up here. Yes. <laughs> here you and you're UNC Pembroke, right? Yes, sir. Shelby will be attending UNC Pembroke in the fall. Congratulations. The next scholarship is the Catherine and Lena Moss Scholarship in honor of our former pastor, Gregory Moss's grandmother and mother. This award is in the amount of $2,000 and will be awarded to Jalen Bracey. attending NC State in the fall. And last but not least, our top scholarship, the Gwen Williamson Scholarship, in the amount of $3,000, will be presented to Alexis Jackson. Alexis will be attending East Carolina University in the fall. Let's give them all a round of applause. You all come on out. Come on out. We'll get a picture of all. Stand right. Leave a little space. Leave a little space.
What a time in worship, family. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Reverend Kelly Baptist, and here's what's happening with St. Paul. The 2020 census has been extended to October 31st. The results of the census will help determine how hundreds of billions of federal funding flows into communities every year for the next decade. That funding shapes many different aspects of every community, no matter how big or small, no matter where they're located. So join me in taking a vital step to shaping the future of our community. Go to 2020census.gov for more details and fill out the census form for every person who lives in your household. It just takes a few minutes and those few minutes can change the rest of your life. Join us each Wednesday at 8.15 for a quick 15. A quick 15 is a brief time to connect with Pastor Scott and the St. Paul family in prayer and devotion. Dial 425-585-7753 to participate. And if you call in at 8 p.m., you'll be able to chat with our other St. Paul family members who are already on the line right before the call starts at 8.15 sharp. It's yet another way to stay connected as a church family during these social distant times. So we'll meet you on the line for a word and prayer on Wednesday. See you then. Join us for TNT this Thursday. You can watch from YouTube, the church website, or Facebook. You can even dial in by phone. So grab your Bible and notepad and study with us this Thursday in our power packed Thursday noon or Thursday night teaching. It's TNT time. Don't miss your moment. Turn up Tuesdays with our Impact Kids, Youth, and Families is at 5 p.m. Say that, 5 p.m. during the summer. We want our young people and their families to stay connected. We know y'all are missing your children and youth church buddies. Reverend C has been on fire and having a great time with our Impact 1401 ministry. And that party rocks on all summer long, so don't miss it. Keep getting punk, fam. Your testimonials about your push to do better with your physical temple have been inspiring people all over and we are proud of everyone working to be St. Paul fit. Keep it up! Monday's uploads drop at 3.30 p.m. just in time for an afternoon workout. Get your water, get your towel, and let's get St. Paul fit. <laughs> The deadline for the Gregory K. Moss Scholarship submission has been extended until July 1st, 2020. That's less than a month away, y'all. Contact the Deacon's Ministry for an application. Patricia Chambers or LaVon Sessions have email addresses that you can reach out to to submit your application. Teachers are needed. Are you ready for a temporary teaching assignment? Are you tech savvy? Do you love kids and want to help them understand more about Jesus? We need you. Come and join us as we prepare to offer an online vacation Bible school. I've got this with Jesus from July the 13th to July the 16th. We need you if you are willing to teach or provide tech support this summer. It is a great way to serve. If you are interested in being a part of this wonderful opportunity to share Jesus Christ with young children and teens and youth at St. Paul Baptist Church, contact Reverend Brenda Richardson at her email address at brichardson at spbcnc.org or you can call her on the church phone at 704-334-5309 extension 113. On Saturday, July the 25th at 9 o'clock a.m., we will host our annual church conference virtually online Saturday, July the 25th 
2020 at 9 o'clock a.m. During this meeting, we will present our budget numbers for our 2021 fiscal year. This will be an invitation-only event where the disciples of St. Paul will have to register to attend. A mass email will be sent out shortly after today's worship service so you can register today to attend via webinar through your computers, smart devices, or calling in on your phone. Please note, our church board has sent out a survey to all young adults ages 18 to 40. Shoot, I missed it. In order to hear directly from you, this is your chance to make your voice heard. We want to hear your opinions. We want to talk about how you would like for St. Paul Baptist Church to connect with you. We want to know what you need. Your input is so valuable to us and we sincerely want to know what you think and what you want. Look out for that email coming directly from the church or if you haven't gotten it, you can fill out the survey form through a link found on the church website. And that's what's going on. Please stay home and stay safe as we worship and fellowship together in a variety of ways. We certainly miss you and look forward to when we can all come together again. In the meantime, check out the church website or contact the church office for more details or if you have any questions. Also, make sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo, YouTube, Instagram. We got you covered. This has been your St. Paul News and until next time, be blessed.